Malaysia has seized all exports of poultry livestock beginning today, marking a new chapter in the worldwide avian flu epidemic. With the recent reappearance three months ago of the H5N1 virus in Brazil, the world's largest exporter of chicken, and with America and Germany still unable to resume exports to Asia, Singapore's poultry imports have effectively come to a standstill. Meanwhile, scuffles broke out this morning in several supermarkets as customers clamoured for the final deliveries of chicken from Malaysia. Today was really crazy because it's the last day for chicken coming in from Malaysia. But thankfully, we managed to keep the situation under control and not too much damage was caused in the end and no one was badly injured. We queued up here since 6am. It's a family tradition that during our grandpa's birthday, we have chicken wings for dinner. But looks like this year, no chicken wings for us. It's really unfair that the rich people have ordered all the frozen chicken. I don't know what to tell my grandpa. The shortage has started to affect local businesses and ultimately Singaporeans at large. I already stopped buying. When the price went up above $30 per chicken, it's too expensive already. I tell my husband now we must grow more veggie in our balcony so that we can have our own security and our own food supply. Ma. Experts say this is the opportune time for Singaporeans to embrace alternative food sources produced locally. We are a Singaporean company, so we understand what Singaporeans like to eat. Housewives like lichen because it's versatile. It can be seasoned to taste like chicken or even beef. And Singaporeans can rest assured that lichen is 100% safe and endorsed by our government. This morning, eyewitnesses informed police of several more mysterious crop circles appearing in HDB estates across Singapore. Having first appeared in Marsiling, Bishan and Red Hill earlier this week, they appeared today in Badok and Jurong West. This is the second day these unexplained patterns have surfaced in HDB estates all over parts of Singapore. From what experts have confirmed, these circles appeared on state land marked for redevelopment into nursing homes and foreign worker dormitories. And while speculations is rife among Singaporeans, especially in the online social media space, the National Crisis Centre has declined comment, saying that investigations are underway. Due to the high volume of calls, the hotline is currently suspended. And as you can see behind me, um, the crops have already started together. This is where the latest crop circles have appeared. And the police has now cordoned off these areas to deter the crowds from gathering. Oh, this, some hunters spring. You see nowadays there's so many unemployed youth graduate, but there's not enough job, so they've got nothing to do. I think it's just some harmless pranks. I don't just understand why everybody's so worried. I think the government should still continue with the build building. Uh, everybody should give and take and share the space, isn't it? Well, I'm just thinking that, you know, Singaporeans don't want their property prices to drop. I mean, who wants to be living next to nursing homes, old people and foreign workers, you know, living in dormitories? I mean, I've spent quite a lot of money on my property. I definitely don't want it to drop. These crop circles are due to the deep underground caverns where they store weapons and military bases. You know, my friends and I, we've been telling people about this but they don't want to believe us. It's no longer safe even in our HDB estates. Ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, can you please drop the shovel? You're not allowed to do this. Okay, this is state land. Okay, please, ma'am. Sir. Police are asking non-residents to avoid these areas to alleviate the traffic jams caused by throngs of curious onlookers. This just in. Reliable sources reveal that the rising Singapore Opposition Party the Seniors League is about to unveil their surprise minority candidate for their GRC slate. Mr. Mohammed Fadawas bin Mohammed Noor, a 21-year-old national serviceman, believed to be two months from completion of his NSF stint. Will he ORD in time before elections are called? And will this placate younger voters worried about grain power? Stay tuned for more after the break on the News at 9. <laughs> Before the finals next week of Singapore Sings, here's another look at our contestants. My name is Samantha, I'm 22 years old this year, and I'm serving NS in the 22nd Division Explosive Disposal Unit. 
With her dynamite vocals, this second-year national service woman can be counted on for an explosive Two, performance. One. Samantha has her cheerleading squad, led by boyfriend Ross, who's just finished serving his NS at the PCF Sengkang Child Care Centre. She's my teacher! I'll wait for you! Will she realise her dreams? Go on to be the next Singapore Sings winner. At first, I was worried that um, NS would be a roadblock to my journey to stardom. But then I realised that it's actually given me a lot of discipline to persevere. And um, now I just want to sing for Singapore. He found his voice when his boss sponsored him for the citizenship lottery and became a new Singaporean. Hello, my name is John. I'm 22 years old. And today I sing Home. This is home, truly, where I know I must be. Now, can he rise to the occasion to show that Singapore is a nation of youth, vigour and diversity? Also can. I'm very, very happy to be in Singapore after I've helped in Singapore. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Ajom's colleagues and fans certainly think so. This is when I won't Come Saturday, vote for finalists Samantha Quack or Ajo Mahmoud for the 2022 edition of Singapore Sings. My dear fellow Singaporeans, as the Secretary General of the Seniors League, I'm very honoured to address you tonight. Our party has done much to reach out at the grassroots level since the last election. Some have said this was made easy by the fact that three in five Singaporeans are already over 45, especially with the continued exodus of more young Singaporeans. Well, to that I say, we are here. And we are not afraid to say, yes, we want to take back what we put in. It is only fair that seniors be not left behind, especially now that we represent the majority. Yes. We are the majority. Transport, housing, health, community outreach. It is time we are front and center when these needs are addressed. We are not just an afterthought anymore. We are not an inconvenience. This is why the Seniors League was formed first as a movement to bring back seniors from retirement colonies in Pulau Ubin. Back into the main island. This is where we rescue old friends and neighbours from nursing homes from across the causeway. Back to where they should belong. In our own home country. Our Singapore. This is where we were born, where we gave birth, where we grew up, and where we will grow old, and where we wish to die and to be buried. So, to the young Singaporeans, know this. We are also as much about connecting with the youth vote especially the ones who have chosen to stay behind. After all, 40 years ago, we were just like you. And 40 years hence, you will be just like us. We are not so different. Like the young, we want to be seen. We too want to be heard. And young Singaporeans, my fellow citizens, we hear you. 
That's why we will soon be unveiling our new GRC candidate to represent you, the minority youth voters. My fellow Singaporeans, trust in the Seniors League. We have been through it before. You are now looking at your future. Thank you.